Hi everyone, my name is Clarissa Ortiz, Outreach Coordinator for the Art Museum of South Texas, and I'm here today to take you on a tour of this amazing exhibit called Across the Atlantic, American Impressionism Through the French Lens. This exhibit features a beautiful mixture of both French and American Impressionism, and as we walk through, I'll show you some of the highlights from the collection that really focus on science and art. So you'll get to see this beautiful mixture, this fusion of the two coming together through these Impressionist works. One of the main things that Impressionist artists use to their advantage is nature and how the sun creates light and shadows that change throughout the day as the earth rotates and the sun changes position in our sky. So as artists took their tools outside and worked in the open spaces outside, those open spaces were then translated into some of their works, uh, like this piece right here by Colin Campbell Cooper, The Lotus Pool. You see this beautiful outdoor space, and what we also see in this is a unique angle. The arches here that are covered with the foliage are not completely centered, and you get this really interesting perspective, this interesting vantage point here. So you get these unique angles, open spaces, and beautiful lighting depending on what time of the day the artist was outside creating this piece. Um, as these artists are painting outside in the natural light and plain air, you have to work quickly because the light changes. So in working quickly, these artists focus more on the impression of a moment in time instead of all of the fine, minute details. And this lent to this art movement being called Impressionism. As we move on here, along this way, these pieces uh, also really highlight the use of natural light, the sun and shadows. You can see the light hitting the dress on this woman here. This is called A Study in White by Charles Webster Hawthorne. Uh, and again, if you zoom in or look closely, you can see these are rather large, bold brush strokes instead of brush strokes that are small with fine detail. You can really see the movement of the artist and the artist's hand as they create these works. Moving this way, we have Portrait of Mrs. Reed by George Agnew Reed. And while this piece does have maybe a slightly smoother brush strokes, you can still see that the detail is not completely, completely formed. Um, you still have these impressionist strokes to give you the essence of the fabric around the cuffs, the beautiful lace around her shoulders, and really the star of this piece, aside from Mrs. Reed herself, would be the light shining down and the shadows, the light on her hair, the light on her shoulders, and the way the fabric of her dress catches those lights and shadows. Again, here we have an outdoor scene. So we have our Impressionist artists working, moving, drawing inspiration from the outdoors and the natural world. Um, we have the subject here enjoying a moment outside as the artist captures the impression of that moment outside. And again, you see these brush strokes that give that sense of movement of a summer breeze. You see the dress is moving in the wind. You see the clouds in the sky. You see the trees. Not only did Impressionist artists paint these pieces, but they also did some work in drawing these subjects. This is a great, great example right here. You see the deep shadows in some of the areas. You see some of the areas remain very light. And again, one might look at this and say, it's not even finished, it looks unfinished. And I think that really captures some of the beauty of Impressionist art, that the moment can be gone just as quick as quickly as it came. More pieces along this wall that highlight moments in everyday life. We have the hat being pinned. Uh, we have a little bit of a peek into maybe a, a 
private, intimate moment where we're getting ready, we're getting dressed, um, but such a common moment. We all have to get ready, we all have to get dressed to go out into the day. And so this piece is so lovely for highlighting such a simple, ordinary thing. Here we have a piece called the plow. This is a lovely lithograph. And again, it's a moment uh, in what would have been ordinary life, I'm supposing, for this farmer, going out into the plow on the field, uh, working with the horses, and just capturing the beauty of such an ordinary moment in daily life. We'll go this way, and we have here the singer. This is a lovely piece. It is a small piece, but still powerful. And we have, again, a moment in time, and maybe not quite as ordinary as getting dressed in the morning or going out to plow the field. This may be a little more special of an occasion, uh, as we see the subject here singing, performing to an audience in the background. At first glance, you may not have seen the, that there is an audience in the background, or is it an audience in the background? As you look closely, um, you can determine for yourself what exactly is going on. Here we have another piece by American artist, William McGregor Paxton. This is Girl with a Hand Mirror. This piece here is very dreamlike, yet again, like the hat pin piece, features a moment that is so common, so regular. It's not a spectacular thing taking place here, not a spectacular moment. It is a woman looking into her hand mirror. Perhaps she's getting ready in the morning, getting ready for the day, or just taking a moment to adjust her hair or even admire herself. So we get this kind of intimate peek into an ordinary person's daily life. Very similar with this piece here. Um, this is a piece called The Bather by Edgar Degas. And much like the girl with the hand mirror, this is somebody who has been bathing. And we get that peek into that small little moment of daily life, daily action. This piece here is Blue and Gold by Richard Blossom Farley. Um, again, a subject um, that may or may not be an ordinary person. As you look at it, perhaps think about who this person may have been. Um, look at their clothing, look at the surrounding. Does it look more luxurious? Does it look more uh, simple? These are some wonderful things to think about as you examine Impressionist art. Another thing that Impressionist art is focused on is modernity in the modern world and upcoming technology, new things, new luxuries. So as opposed to a piece like the plow with the farmer, you might look at a piece like this and think those are two very different worlds. What has, what has changed? What is changing? And that's where we have science to thank and to think about as we look at these Impressionist works. Thanks to advancements in innovation, technology, we have these new things that are coming around in the modern world at the time. So as mentioned, with Impressionist artists taking their work outside, taking their new supplies outside, and working in plain air, the themes in the paintings reflect those modern changes as well. Uh, in addition to beautiful portrait work, you have work that reflects some of those changes in the world around these artists, like new transportation, new fashions, new luxuries, new amenities. So some of those things can be seen in the portrait work. It's not always somebody out on the farm. It could be somebody um, of a high status, also reflected in what is a simple, intimate, maybe even common moment that doesn't highlight some sort of grand gesture or grand event. So as the world around them changed, Impressionist artists captured those moments and some of those changes, some of those innovations, some of those new activities that came around with the modernization of the world. Uh, in this piece called Market Day, um, you have people 
enjoying a market shopping outing. They're out on the streets. They are buying presumably groceries, fruits, vegetables, things to eat. What other things do you think might be available for sale in a market like this at that time? Maybe new clothing, maybe new tools, maybe new supplies that are available. And how might a market day like this be different from one today? What is your experience going to the store to buy groceries, to buy supplies, to buy um, necessities? Uh, I think it's wonderful that they painted scenes like these because we have something like this to look back at, to reflect upon, and it gives us a look at that small moment at this time to give us a sense of what it was like back then. We move on to pieces like this one. This is called On Grand River by Frank Weston Benson. At the time, we had innovation as far as transportation is concerned. People were using new means of transportation. We were getting around quicker. Uh, boats were coming in different sizes. There were small boats, there were larger boats coming through. We had things like carriages. Um, we didn't have cars yet at this time. Um, so you're seeing the progress moving up to that. You're seeing things before then um, and things changing. So thanks to advancements in technology and transportation, we have really exciting scenes that emerge throughout some of these Impressionist works. You can see other signs of the modern world in his outfit. You see his clothes, he's got that nice hat, which also captures the light and the shadow really well. And it looks like maybe a little more modern of an ensemble than maybe previous generations would have been wearing to go out on the river. This piece is called Towers in the Mist. It's a lovely piece that again highlights the changes that were coming in the modern world. Um, here we start to see different modes of transportation. We're seeing buggy type cars. We see people on the street. We see these towers in the mist. The beautiful title of this piece. Um, and you see a real glimpse of city life. Um, whereas before this, it may not have looked anything like that. Um, you have these new things coming, the cities are being built up. We see real industrialization happening. So you get those uh, sub-themes of progress and hope. You get the importance of creativity and innovation. You get the importance of those areas in scientific development where people are coming up with these great ideas and making them happen and putting them together. Um, they're working them out uh, and developing um, not only the cities, but creatively their minds, um, society, um, all sorts of areas are benefiting from development that is happening in this period. Much like those other pieces, we have a scene here we have boats. These boats, again, highlight transportation, innovation. Um, and what I really love about this piece is not only do you get that sense of development uh, and progress in the modern world with the scenery, we've got buildings that have been developed, we've got the boats to move people around, uh, but the colors, the light, um, specifically these brush strokes in the water, such a wonderful quality in the Impressionist movement, those large brush strokes that give movement. You really have a lot of elements that come together to really lend themselves um, to this piece, to these artists, and to the movement that was Impressionism. Thanks for coming on this tour with me, and I hope you join us again for future tours at the Art Museum of South Texas.